Hi everyone. Um, I kind of wanted to just share a little bit of some progress that I've made on my iOS project that I've been working on for a really long time. Um, it's definitely not Stunt Truck Pro. Um, that's some graphics that I created a little while back um, for, for the iPhone and iPhone game and I'm just using all of them because I have the retina graphics already set up and I have the non-retina graphics and it's all to the proper um, aspect ratio and everything like that. So this game that I'm working on now is basically a city defense game where there is a giant spaceship hovering over a metropolitan city and you're um, going to a level here. It's All this is very in progress and the models and artwork are not completed but basically you're defending a pretty gargantuan um, city with different sections like a downtown um, an airport area down here, um, a shipping port area down there, and um, you're defending it from the spaceship that's raining down fire and hell basically from the sky over the city, and you're going around and, and touching and activating cannons and things like that to basically send projectiles and stuff back up at the ship, and racing around the city trying to get this, you know, these aliens to leave basically. So what I wanted to demo was, is I was finally able to wrap my head around Unity's player press, which is basically Unity's system for saving game states. It's basically like the save data, you know, when you're playing on your phone and you beat a level and then you beat the next level and you come back and you play the game again and close the game, it saves what levels you beat and what levels are still locked. So I'm going to go in here without further ado. And this is our main menu. I don't know if I've demoed this before. Um, garage, settings. Uh, the garage is kind of neat. And this works really well with the touch on the on the uh, iOS devices and everything. It looks really good. And it swivels real nice. It's got a little animation where it swivels. And you can select a vehicle. Um, I haven't implemented using player preps yet for instantiating the selected vehicle. But it's really simple with this because it would be like this is activated blue car variable, red car variable, and then you just instantiate you know, that data in the level from the variable. But what I wanted to go into was race. Oh, and I need to do something. Um, I'm going to go in the level select. I'm going to do this real quick. Uh, delete all player press. It's basically a little script. Real simple. When I load this back up, Let's uh, turn the script on. That would help. It should remove. Let me go on here. Okay, I removed all the saved data. That's just a little debugging script that I have. I'll actually uh, show it. Might help. Just function update when you run it and activate it. Player press delete all. It just deletes basically. It's like deleting all saved data, erasing the card, whatever. And I use it for testing. Um, you definitely wouldn't want that in your your real game. But I'm gonna go back. Now that I've took, taken care of that mistake, and we'll go in here, and I have all the lock states, and then an unlock state, and these are basically just um, a bunch of GUI textures, you know, they're just images, and um, the selection is using colliders, just like a mesh collider or whatever, and you can see that the only one active is the first one. They line up in the viewport to each one of these uh, GUI texture images. So the first one's the only one unlocked and active. Um, I'm going to try to get my play window back. Go in here. Now, when I click on this, I've went into my levels and I've made it to where you have, for debugging and testing, you don't have to play the level at all. It's just instantly won as soon as it starts. So that's it's going to be a little unsettling here. This is just a level one uh, stand-in loading graphic. We're not collecting coins beyond any doubt, but it's just a standing graphic. And there it is, instant UN quit condition for level one. It's going to go back to the menu. And level two, because you won level one, is unlocked now. And I click on that, and my level two graphic comes up. I'm going to come up with the different mission text in here for what you have to activate and the cannons you have to find. And then, of course, you win on that one. And then level three is unlocked. And we can click on that, and we have our level 3 graphic. And then um, after our loading screen goes by, it'll take us into U1 on the level 3. And then we're good. And 
we can go back and I can even stop running the application and then go back and run it again and it saved the data ah I clicked on one but it saved the data all the levels are unlocked that you've beaten and I've tested it on the device and it works on the iPhone it's saving it the only time you lose that data is when you completely uninstall the game from the device um, but I'm sure there's a way to store that data you know on a server or something like that so you can just keep it no matter if you uninstall my game and you reinstall it um, the instant win thing I'm gonna load up level one here and this is all stand-in artwork it's all in progress I got my little modular pieces everywhere and it's uh, it's pretty massive believe it or not as one entire chunk of 65,000 polygons uh, I'm gonna document and videotape this with my wife's an icon but it runs really smooth. It runs at about 22 frames a second, which is everything all in one giant piece in here, which was unbelievable to me. Um, because I have a culling system I'm going to use, and we're really only going to draw maybe like 3,000 triangles on screen at once. The frame rate will be stellar, um, as long as we don't get too many particles and alpha blended things going on. But uh, it just blew my mind that this whole chunk, huge mesh all in one piece ran on my phone and loaded fine. Um, but basically I have a game manager in here and I'm trying to get back to the, the whole game winning thing. And down here I have an attribute on my game manager called set score. And normally I'd set it to like for level one to four. And basically what it is, is here's these little pick up or collectible objects. Um, I'm trying not to think of them that way. They're going to, they could be any shape, any type of collision, a platform or something that you would drive on top of a button or activate a cannon by touching it or hitting a button with your car or flipping a switch with your car. Um, it could be anything creative that you can think of. And basically when you touch that and do that, it would increment your score up to one. And when your score, if we had set score four, when you've touched four of these objectives or touched four buttons or whatever, uh, on the four of them that are set, you would have a this level is one graphic pop up like we had, and then you would go back to the menu and it would be unlocked. So for the instant win thing for testing and debugging, I just set it um, to zero. So as soon as the level loaded, it was like that GUI graphic came up and it was like you've won and, and took you back to the menu. But really, it's going to be you're going to have to go around. We have a timer. Um, I'll hit play here. We have a timer running. Oh. Now let me go back real quick because we're in a win condition because there's no score to set. I'm just going to set win. It just instantly kills the level. So here it is running. We're never going to get to level. We're not going to get score one because this is set up for touch controls and no amount of pushing on the mouse is going to do this. But there's a cool respawn functionality that works. It respawns you if your car flips. This shows you how many of the objectives you've gotten. And my very first idea, I just randomly grabbed coin graphics and was like, oh, you're going to go around and pick up piles of coins like Mario. But it's going to be actually in images of your objectives, like the cannons you need to turn on. And there's also a time limit graphic, and the timer works. If that reaches zero and you don't have your four elements or three elements or whatever elements you have to touch or activate in that level done in that time, you have a, a game lost scenario that happens. Um, uh, pausing function going on here too. Um, so anyway, that's just a little bit of a demo on wrapping my head around doing um, it's kind of a cool car. I like the DeLorean. Um, I had to remove all the branding on these cars so they can't have any logos or brands and they got to be modified a little so they don't look like precisely the original car. Um, you don't want to get in any kind of legal trouble so there's no branding on the vehicles or anything. Um, so that's just the state I'm in right now, and as I, you know, it's really difficult being one person and trying to do all of the, the scripting and all of the artwork and everything like that. It's just really hard, and I'm not a programmer uh, by profession, but I've really learned a lot, and um, this learning how to save the game states of things has really helped me, and it will definitely help here in the garage when you select a you know a certain vehicle and I want to be able to instantiate or spawn that vehicle in the world that's your selected vehicle um, it'll help save that information too so you can come back and have your car that you selected before um, so 
Anyway, I just wanted to share that because I was pretty happy with um, figuring that out. So thanks for watching.